Hey everybody, what is up? This is Devin Lavore coming at you solo. Haven't been in this position for a while, but circumstances have warranted it. Um, and I've got a uh, really cool message, I think that will encourage anybody that might feel like they're going through a test in their life, a strong test. You know, the scripture says that God in, um, it's here in my notes, <laughs> in uh, Psalm 11, I believe Psalm 11 verse 4 and verse 5 it talks about the Lord testing his people it talks about the Lord testing the unyieldingly and rigidly and uncompromisingly righteous he takes them he says oh I see something there I'm gonna I'm going to uh, test you to see if I can get more out of you kind of like the woman who had a demon possessed daughter and she came to Jesus and threw herself down and was just calling out to him and he rejected her two times not because he was unwilling it's because he saw something there and he was testing to see oh how bad do you want this i see your faith is there let me stretch it out even more because the scripture says to them who have more will be given but him who doesn't have even what he has will be taken away from him and so if you feel like you're in a test be encouraged you're on the right path and the Lord's doing amazing things in your life. And this is a, I believe this is a word from God. It's a, it's a, it's a prophetic word, but in a sense, it's like a, this is who God is. And this is the way he is like all the time. So you can count on these things. And the first place I'm going to start is in Hosea 6.1. I'm going to kind of build something and then, sh you know, you'll see the whole picture at the end. Um, I'm going to start with Hosea chapter 6, verse 1. It says, come and let us return to the Lord. Just that statement right there, okay? And then we skip over to Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15, which says, For thus said the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning to me and resting in me, you shall be saved. In quietness and in trusting confidence shall be your strength. And then if we skip over to Zechariah chapter 9, verse 12, a very popular scripture, um, it says, Return to the stronghold of security and prosperity, you prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will restore double your former prosperity to you. So what do we see in all those? It's basically, I felt like the Lord was saying to me today that we're not necessarily far away and we're in sin or something like that and we have to return. But no, it's like a lot of times when we're getting tested, our gaze, our attention, our focus can be turned away from the Lord. We're talking to the unyieldingly, uncompromisingly righteous, those who know the Lord, those who are walking with the Lord, even us. You know, the test comes to show, like, what are we going to do when the storm happens? What are we going to do when the darkness comes? What are we going to do during those times? Well, a lot of times we turn our gaze toward ourselves, or we turn our gaze toward surviving, or we turn our gaze toward uh, uh, anything but the Lord. So when the Lord's saying return, it means to return your gaze, turn your gaze again back to the Lord, put your focus back on him, back on his word, back on what he is saying, and in that you will find peace, in that you will find rest, in his word you will find victory, in his word you will find salvation, in his word you will find everything you need to not just survive your situation or your test, but to really pass the test with flying colors. So that's just a principle of what to do when you're when you're taking a test, you know? People have a ton of videos and you know go to different classes and everything that here's a, here's great test taking techniques right say that three times real fast <laughs> um, test taking techniques and um, this is one of them the best way to pass a test of the Lord is to remember the word to look to the father and what is coming from his heart what word is coming from his heart how did the Lord Jesus who is the word made flesh how did he pass his three tests his three temptations um, now temptations and tests are different but the temptation can test us you know what I'm saying and so how did he pass it you know the enemy tried to entice him to look at something different 
But Jesus was like, no, this is what is written. No, this is what is written. No, this is what is written. And after that third time, it was like the enemy just left and the angels came and it was really awesome. He got this victory. He passed the test. He passed the test that he didn't even need to take. He passed it for us, you know? And so I felt like the Lord was saying to me today, you know, I'm going back to Hosea chapter six and I'll just read the whole thing so we can get this kind of in context, um, kind of. <laughs> it says, come, let us return to the Lord. And so now he's gonna go on and talk about what happens when you return to the Lord? It says, for he has torn. So right there, there's an acknowledgement of being torn, of being ripped, being like hurt. There's a, an acknowledgement of pain. It's like he, the Lord has done this. The Lord has led us through this test. The Holy Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness. So there's an acknowledgement of God's hand in the thing that you're going through that might be painful. And it says, for he has torn so that he may heal us. So see your pain and the grief and everything that you might be going through. It's not the end of the thing. It's when Jesus said, like when Jesus said, hey, this will not end in death. And even though Lazarus died, <laughs> um, the Lord proved that that was not the end. Some of you are facing a situation right now where you feel like this is the end. And the Lord is saying to you, it really is not. It's really just the pathway to your eternal destiny. It's really just the pathway into everything that God has for you if you will stick with him and go with him and listen to what he's saying and and use his word as a bridge into the destiny and calling that he has for you it's because he, yes he has torn but he did it so he can heal he has stricken so that he may bind us up it's like you're 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 kind of out of alignment you're kind of messed up so i'm cracking you into alignment and there is pain but it's bringing you back into right alignment so you can walk upright and not hunched over you know in verse 2 after 2 days he will after 2 days he will revive us quicken us give us life on the 3rd day he will raise us up that we may live before him so in all of these, we can focus on two different things. We can focus on the tearing, we can focus on the strickening, or we can focus on the fact that we're dead and in need of reviving. We can focus on the fact that we're dry bones to begin with. We can focus on that, that's fine, you can, but you're not gonna get anywhere with it. Um, or, or we can focus on the fact that, well man, in my torn state, God wants to heal me. In my stricken state, God wants to bind me up. And that's actually what he's trying to do. In my state of hopelessness, God wants to breathe life and, and bring me back to life, bring me out of the, gr the grave. Son of man, these dry bones are the whole nation of Israel, for they say, that means they were speaking it out of their mouth, saying, we have no hope. There is no hope in God. God cannot save us. God's not going to do anything. There's hopelessness. There's hopelessness. There's hopelessness. And God was like, oh, I'm going to speak to that. I'm going to say something to that, that I am going to bring you up out of your graves. That means their hearts were in such a state that they felt dead inside. And so, and the Lord's like, I'm going to revive you and I'm going to cause you to live again. Okay. <clears throat> and in verse three, it says, so then it says, yes, let us know, recognize, be acquainted with and understand him. So it's like, let's return and get our healing. Let's turn our gaze back to the Lord and what he's saying and his heart, and we will be healed. We will be raised up. We will come out of our graves. We will have hope. We will have joy. We will have rejoicing, and we will understand him. It says, yes, let us be zealous to know the Lord, to appreciate, give heed to, and cherish him. And so... This is the part that really stuck out at me because last night I felt like the Lord was giving me this phrase, um, as certain as the dawn. It just kept coming to me and coming to me. And this is not the first time that that's happened. So this that I'm getting ready to read, everything so far has just kind of been a setup. That's been stage one. Now let's go to stage two. <laughs> this is the setup for like what God has, is saying. This is what I really feel like he, like let's get into the meat of what he's really saying here. It says his going forth is prepared and certain as the dawn. And he will come to us as the heavy rain, as the latter rain that waters the earth. 
So I felt like the Lord was basically saying, like, look at those words. They're, the first, first thing that I felt like the Lord wanted us to hear was that what he has prepared, he's prepared. It's like it's already done. It's already prepared. He's prepared the banquet. Everything's good and done. And then he invites you in. Then he brings you into it, you know. And it says it's a certain thing, like his coming, his what he's prepared and what he's going to do in your life is certain. He is going to do it, but the Lord's like, will you have faith for it and believe for it? And thus that faith will put you in a position to receive it. You know, a lack of faith will cause wandering in the wilderness. We see that in the nation of Israel. But uh, uh, the presence of faith in the midst of the test, in the midst of the suffering, in the midst of the enemy hammering you, in the midst of the difficulties, you will inherit the promise. You know, you don't want to be a foolish virgin. You want to be a wise virgin who holds on to the to the uh, word of the Lord. Now, as far as the dawn is concerned, the Lord's like, I'm giving you this example because who doubts or wonders or... I'm a little fearful. I'm not sure if the sun is going to rise tomorrow. I don't know, said no one ever. No one ever says that. They are like 100%. It's not even an issue. It's not even a thought. It's not even a concern. You don't even wonder if the, the sun's going to come up tomorrow. That's the kind of faith that the Lord wants us to have in him. That he, we are absolutely sure. And he's literally saying, like, that is what's going to happen. Now, he's saying it is certain that I am going to happen. I'm going to come just like the second coming of Jesus. It doesn't matter how long it's been since he died 2,000 years ago. He says, I'm going to return again. And when I return, that's going to be the stamp, the final stamp on the final end of all things. And we know that that's going to happen. That's as certain as the dawn as well. But God showing up into our life, into our situations, into our circumstances, him showing up is as certain as the dawn. He will do it. And the enemy's trying as hard as he can to convince you that that is not true, that that's not going to happen. And anytime you feel that, you know, you just got to like, okay, you take it to the Lord and say, Lord, what are you saying? What is your word? And this is what the Lord says. He's like, I'm, I've already prepared the blessing for you. I've already prepared the glory for you. I've already par prepared the honor and the deliverance and the salvation for you. You take my hand. I'm going to walk you right into it. You're going to experience it. Not only does God give us the fact that like, listen, it's going to certainly happen, but I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to tell you exactly how it's going to happen. Well, I'm going to come to you as the heavy rain, as the latter rain that waters the earth. There's also a scripture that talks about the Lord being like the early rain. So he's the early, the during, and the, and the latter. He's all of it. You know, everything good comes from him. Now, the Lord says he could have said, I'm going to come to you like the rain. He could have said that, but he says, I'm going to come to you like the heavy rain. I'm going to read the Amplified, which kind of brings out a lot of the rich meaning of the Hebrew words and the Greek words, but this is the Hebrew, obviously. So what the Lord wants you to know is that he's not going to just come in and, you know, itsy bitsy spider you. You know what I mean? He's not going to just come in with a little sprinkle and a little spritz. He's not going to come in with just enough just enough to eke you through your situation. He is not going to do that. He's not even going to come in with a pretty decent rain. The Lord is going to come in abundance. I'm talking deluge. Like when Elijah prayed to break that three and a half year curse that was appointed by God, his time. You see, you got to wait for God's, you got to wait for God's timing to click and for that. Oh, that's it. Time to check the oven. You got to wait for that timing. You gotta wait, and 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 when the Lord gives us words like what He's giving us today, that that's the tick, 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 tick. You can just hear like, oh man, it's, God's ticking. The timer is ticking. Things are getting ready to pop. We don't know when it's gonna go off. We don't. We don't need to know. We're not the ones cooking up the things. We're not the ones who have prepared what's getting ready to happen. God is the one preparing. All we need to do is trust and wait for Him to deliver for him to do what he is going to do, what he is justly prepared to do. And he's saying like, what I have prepared is heavy. And when Elijah prayed and the, the, the clock struck 12 um, and then the rain poured down, it says, and there was a great 
rain. It wasn't just, oh, it's raining again. Oh, awesome. No, God's like, okay, I am going to pour out my heart again. You know, please receive me. You know, I'm going to pour out my blessing. I'm going to pour out everything I am and it's going to be abundant and it's going to be lavish and it's going to be awesome. And it's like, we got to be in a position where we turn to the Lord, you know, Hosea 6, 1, Isaiah 30, verse 15, Zechariah 9, 12. We return to the Lord. We turn our gaze back to the Lord and we listen to what he's saying. We hear what he's saying. And then we re receive that from his heart. Hey, everybody. <laughs> what Surprise. happened? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, um, I was just uh, looking, going through my journal and um, as Devin was doing the beginning of this video, and I just kind of wanted, it felt like I should come and read something that um, I guess I, I wrote back in December. So um, I have no idea what you're going to read. Yeah. <laughs> this is exciting. But, um, but first, you know, just kind of going with what you've been talking about as far as just like, you know, just I think really returning to the place of hope in the Lord. Um, for me personally, it's been a real struggle um, this week. It's kind of an understatement, I think. <laughs> But um, just like to to really hope for what the Lord is has been speaking, and so, um, and I think like for me personally, this is just like literally like an exercise of my own faith, and it's that strengthening of my own tottering knees. And oh, girl, you're getting and, ahead of my message. Oh, you're getting ahead of my oh, message. Sorry. I thought no, I'm you just were. Kidding. I'm you're just ready. <laughs> just but kidding. um. So um, I just kind of wanted to read this. Um, there's actually two little journal entries that I wanted to read um, because I feel like it's, you know, it's part of having hope in the Lord is to remember what he's spoken and what he's said. And um, Put me in remembrance. And so this is something that I received from the Lord, but I, I believe it's just it's for the body of Christ in general. Um, and so um, I'm just going to read it as I have it written. So, <laughs> so we are ready. Yeah. All right. So it says, you will see my resurrection power, both physical and spiritual. Mm. You will witness my power in you and through those around you. You will see the dead come to life, demons fleeing, um, and the sick become well, hearts restored, um, faces rearranged, legs regrown, hearts made whole, teeth restored to where there were where there were none eyes made alive sight restored skin made new the dumb speak the lame leap ears unstopped at my word and in my name <laughs> you know why i'm laughing <laughs> keep going health will be wow. restored to my people body soul and spirit marriages will come alive with my breath I will breathe upon my people, and new life will be reborn into them. Sounds like the dry bones to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he says, I say yes to healing, yes to the power of my spirit, moving on the earth once again in a greater measure than has been seen. The best has been held back, but now is the time for all things to go forth. I must ready my people. And this is in quotes, like, bring out the oil, the wine, bring forth the spices and sweet perfumes. Ready my bride, for I am ready to pour out my love on her. I am ready to give her the best of me. I make, I make her ready. Go forth and release the promises. Release the sweet aroma and scent of dreams coming true. Release the harvest. Release the baby. Release the calf. Release the baby. <laughs> Release the calf and open the doors. It is time for my people to to dine and to and feast. To fatten their hearts on the truth of my word. Yeah. Let the festivities begin. Sound the trumpets. My people, my bride, must come in. I must lavish on her all my love and fill her heart with the songs of delight. She must be refreshed, for she has waited long and has feeble legs on which to stand. Go and bring her in and let us feast together. I will wash her on? feet, I will <laughs> strengthen her to stand, and I will cover her with my garment. <clears throat> Time is up, 
The waiting is over. The feasting has come. Rejoice, my daughter. Rejoice, for your reward is great. Mm. Come in and enjoy all the dainties I have to offer you. Mm. Make merry and sing, O barren one, for you are no longer desolate. You have become a, you have become chosen. Oh, yeah, to sit at my feast. Wow. Rest, yes, rest and rejoice, for I will care for you as a nursing mother with her child. I will give of myself to you, for you have waited and withstood the test of time, and you have delighted my heart with your perseverance, and I have found you faithful. Mega is your faith, and great is your reward. Wow. Come, come to me, and I will give you rest. The table is set, and your seat is ready. Open the gate. Open the banqueting doors and let my people, my faithful ones, come in and find rest. And so that was just what I, <laughs> I was looking over and it was just like, wow, this is for right now. You know, I did mean, we, I, did, you, did we did you get that before we knew about the uh, year of oil and spices? Um, I think it might have been coming in around that time. It was stirring at that time. Yeah, it was stirring at that time. But that was from uh, December 19th, actually. Wow. Um, but it was interesting, too, because underneath, 19th. underneath that, this part, um, I actually had written a dream that I had had. And it was, I was dreaming about tornadoes coming up at me everywhere. And, um, and they were just, like, coming towards me. And I was just trying to hide from them. And it was just, like... And I feel like right now there's... That sounds about right. It sounds about right. <laughs> What's kind of been going on? I'd probably try to pull and, out my sword and hack it. <laughs> Devin, you can't cut a tornado. Yeah. What's wrong with you? But it's like, you know, <laughs> as these storms come, it's like, Lord, just help me and, you know, help us through those things to not hide from them, but to just come to you and um, go through the storm. Go through the darkness. And to um, where God is. Get another one, right? Yeah, just a it's a short, much shorter one, but um basically it, it was like the Lord was basically saying, like, I am coming, but the hour you do not know. Mm -hmm. And it's like you don't know when he's coming, but he is coming. And and when I come, your heart will be delighted and dreams will come true. I will surprise you, knock your socks off. And do not be afraid or be anxious with time. And so, um, you know, and that's... That is not easy. It's not easy. You're going to need the power easy. of the Spirit yes. on that one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because, you know, time time comes. And I, I think that's really where the Lord is, you know, when he's talking about the hope. You know, this, this whole quarter and, um, has really just, God has been hammering in the hope. And it's been Hope a hard. Restored. It's been a hard. I think for me personally, it's it's there's it's been hard to hold on to hope, to be a prisoner of hope, um, you know, and to constantly walk in that. Um, but it's like he's at the same time he's teaching us how to hope. It's like, well, how do you continue to hope? Will you come back to me? You come into my shelter. You. You remember my words that I've spoken. That's been, you know, last week we talked about three R's. <laughs> and one of those was remember. Remember what he has said and what he's going to do. It's like, um, it was funny. Our son, he has this, like, comic book that we got him. And um, he made up a, a comic. Well, it's like a, it's a comic book template. Yeah, template. So it's he a, can make his own, like yeah. write his own script and everything. That's and so amazing. He, yeah. made, he made us a story about the two of us and yeah. we're superheroes and our nemesis is uh, fear for you and yeah. doubt for me. Yeah. And there's this one picture, though. It was so funny because um, I had got gotten, a, a, I guess, doubt like came on me and mm -hmm. and and so the only way for doubt to get out is I had to have something heavy thrown on me and he threw this picture of oh, Devin oh. throwing a car at me and doubt just like yeah felt but it was interesting because there had been um 
gosh, it was probably, what, in 2018. 2018, you're talking about the dream? Yeah, oh, you yeah. had, Devin had this dream where this he was- during our time with the corporation. Yeah, he was using yeah. um, a vehicle to just keep keep the, the wolf tell it? at bay. Oh, okay. <laughs> And, no, um, <laughs> and you're going to synopsize it. Yeah. Okay, but cool. basically like the vehicle kind of represented the vision mm -hmm. of what God had spoken. And mm -hmm. so it was almost like, that's so true. Like it, there's this, like the only thing that sometimes can like, you know, it has to come and it has to be something heavy and hard. It's like the vision of the Lord. And I really feel like for me, a lot of times when the doubt hits, that's one of the things that brings can snap and break doubt. It's it's the hope of the vision that God has has placed yeah. in front of us, and yeah. it and it's like that joy that's set before you. And so even mm -hmm. today, when I was reading my journal, it was just like, oh, yes, again, the Lord is like setting before you, before me, like this is this is my plan. This is what I'm doing, yeah. and I know it's long in coming. And I felt like for me that was really comforting. Like just knowing that it's like God knows, He's not He's not absent of knowing how we're feeling at the time or what we're going through, and it's like He's like I know you've been waiting long, and that's why I'm I'm doing all of this. That's why I need I want and desire to lavish myself upon my people because, as a body of believers, we have been in a long-awaited process. And, and waiting to see the fulfillment of God's word over our life. And so I think, you know, when the Lord, he comes in and he really just starts sharing his heart, sharing his, his vision, it was just like, this is what I'm doing. And, and just that he knows where we're at and he knows how we feel. And he's not, um, I don't know, he's just very familiar. He knows what it's like to wait. <laughs> That and, is an understatement of eternity. <laughs> and um, but he's also speaking, just like I have great things for you, and this is going to happen. You know, it's like I think that's where really it's that timing piece, and the Lord's like, don't don't get focused on that. Just continually focus on me, and that will give you hope. Have your hope in me, yeah. not. A circumstance or a timing of something yeah. and and that's really I know for myself that's really really difficult it's really hard to you know continue to just be like oh, okay I feel like kind of like I don't know like I, you know it really is like you know if you you have your back out of place or something's out of place and you're mm -hmm. trying to get it into alignment yeah. and it's like it just keeps going this way and it's like ah, come back this way it's like uh, you know and you just have to keep bracing it and putting it back into place so that your hope can be steadily fixed on the lord himself and nothing else but god has a listening plan for you you he kind does. Of like a, it's kind of like a chiropractic plan. You just yes. got to keep popping well, it well, in. Well, we have he has a couple in. of things. I think I think the things that he's shown me, me personally, for for to continually have hope is the listening to him, and that's like listening to his word. What is he speaking? And Faith actually attaching my heart to it, not yeah. just just doubting hearing it, it. Yeah. <laughs> or just, and yeah. defending and doubting, and this yeah. is what's going on. But yeah. like listening to him. Um, and then remembering what he has spoken already. And, and that's kind of keeping with the vision, like keep that vision, keep the flame alive, like what he's talked about with the, mm -hmm. the fire. Yeah. And um, the other one actually was, um, told me to like keep knocking, keep asking and keep seeking. Yeah. Because for, for me personally, it's like when I feel hopeless, that's when it's like, I don't want to ask for anything. That's the last thing you I, want to do. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I don't want to do that. But God's like, yeah, keep doing that. And that's pushing through the darkness. That's mm -hmm. going into the place where he is. Yeah. And you'll see the light and, and life will look different. Um, and it's like, okay, so those are a few of the tools that, that mm -hmm. really just God's just brought up. Um, to, test, test taking techniques. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to do those things and to put my mind and my heart on that and, um, and to see him just move 
as yeah. as as I lean in and do those things. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> So you can keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I interrupted the video. <laughs> it's fine. It was, a, it was a great interruptus. It was a very welcomed interruptus. Yeah. So here we go. <laughs> so I'm glad I ended up not having to do this video by myself. It was a great little surprise, you know? God will surprise you. He has. <laughs> Um, that's okay. I was like, you overcome. That's what you do. I was like, I'll see her before this video is over. Probably, you know? Yeah, so I'm super glad that you decided to share. It's awesome. And so, um, so yeah, so the Lord's been speaking to us today about mm -hmm. returning. Returning? And, uh, <laughs> and so, but also he's like, I'm coming. Yeah. That's going to happen. It's going to happen. You've got to decide what you're going to do with that information. I'm going mm -hmm. to happen. I'm going to happen. That's a word from the Lord. I am going to happen. <laughs> I am going to happen. Anyway, because it's as certain as the dawn and the thing, and it's prepared and it's already ready, mm -hmm. you know? And then I felt that the Lord took me back to Second Chronicles 29, verse 36. It says, Thus Hezekiah rejoiced and all the people because of what God had prepared for the people. Again, there's a pre preparation. God prepared all this. We didn't do anything. God prepared it. But the last sentence says, for it was done suddenly. Now, you know, when God's about to show up, it always happens suddenly. It's always a surprise. It's always a sudden intrusion. I'm like, hey, guys, here I am. How's it going? Kind of like in Luke 24 that we learned last week. God kept put, bringing that up about he just shows up. He just decides, I'm going to show up right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in the midst of whatever you might be going through, even in the midst of tests, you know, you will show up. And, um, and I felt like the Lord was just sharing with me that when, when we get tested, testing is a part of the preparation. It's a part of the preparation to see if you can handle what he wants to bring you into. You know, it's, it's just a necessary thing. Jesus said, you gotta baptize me do this so that we can fulfill everything that's righteous. Did he need to be cleansed of his sins or anything like that? No, yeah. but that he needed to go through the whole process of man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He had to go through the testing in the wilderness for 40 days. It's a part, it's part of the process. And we have to trust God with the process and trust ourselves to God's process. Did mm -hmm. you want to say anything on that? Well, yeah, and that was... Um you know, one of the things that I have written down is just that the Lord's like, hey, you are in the promise process. So you're in the process. It's, it's the same yeah. with giving birth. There is a process to the development of the baby so that you can actually yeah. have the baby at the time of birth. And so it's like, that's really just, you know, like you're saying, continuing to trust the Lord in the process that he has you in. Yeah. And, some, and a lot of times in that process, you get tested, mm -hmm. you get blood tests, you get fluid tests, mm -hmm. you get all kinds of different tests done to you throughout that process mm -hmm. to um, make sure that everything's okay, you know, right? Mm -hmm. Just to make sure the baby's okay, make sure the mom is okay, Yeah. you know, make sure the dad's okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they don't have a test for that. But <laughs> make sure the other kids are okay. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, but I wanted to just end this with, um, I know we've been doing a lot of reading, mm -hmm. you know, but, <laughs> but I wanted to end this with another just kind of a, it, it, it literally is a prophetic word, but it's from Isaiah chapter 35. But I really feel like God's like, this is my heart. It's, it's literally what he's saying like right now. Mm -hmm. And I know we've, we've, I read the Lord gave me this word back in January of 2018. Mm -hmm. And the Lord's like, it doesn't matter when you receive it. It's like, this was written, uh, you know, a thousand years ago. I don't remember how long ago it was written, but the bottom line is like, you got to stop looking at things from a t time frame. Like, like my promises have some sort of expiration date on them, you know, mm -hmm. must be fulfilled by, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> or it's, oh, it's supposed to be fulfilled by now, but oh, I guess it's, I guess it's probably rotten. Okay. That, that word is probably growing mold on it. That's not mm -hmm. the case. Mm -hmm. If God says, this is what I want to do, you know, this is what he wants to do. But hear this, just hear it. It says, um, the wilderness and the dry land shall be glad, Isaiah 35. 
The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the rose and the autumn crocus. <laughs> I always feel like going like, you know, that, that Bill Painter guy, you know, he's, he died, but anyway. <laughs> it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. Now, there we go again with those word abundantly. God could have just said, it shall blossom and rejoice. That would have been a great promise, right? Mm -hmm. But the Lord's like, no, I want you to know my heart. It shall blossom abundantly. Well, it's going to rain. No, there's going to be a great rain. Because when God's like, when I step in, I'm going to step in and I'm going to show you who I am. Yeah. I'm not going to step in and be on my best behavior kind of thing. No, I'm going to step in. I'm going to show you who I am and no one's going to correct me or tell me I can't be who I'm going to be. That's what Jesus did and the religious people didn't like him for it. It says the glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the wilderness. The excellency of, of Mount Carmel and the plain of Sharon shall be given to the wilderness, to the barren place. And these are all lush, rich places mm -hmm. shall be given to the wilderness. Um, they shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty and splendor and excellency of our God. See, the majesty and splendor and excellency and glory of God, that's an, that's a, that's an abundance. Yeah. That's a, that's a great rain, you know? And so verse 3, strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble and tottering knees. That's why I was laughing when you were reading that stuff. I'm like, are you serious? Yeah. Now listen, <laughs> I have been seeing 12, 12 like crazy lately. And you know, for those of you who may not know, God speaks to us through prophetic numbers all the time. Um, if you have a problem with that, I'm sorry. Watch someone else. Um, <laughs> the bottom line is, I have been seeing it like crazy. I'm like, Lord, why do you keep showing me this? Like government, like like double government. I don't know what that means. You know, just, I need you to show me. Just show me what it is and I will wait patiently. Well, strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble and tottering knees. The reference to that is Hebrews 12, 12, mm -hmm. which basically says the same thing. That's what he's quoting. He's quoting this. And it's just like, wow, that's amazing. And, and so... Right then I knew like, oh, that is what you've been trying to say. Like strengthen yourself in the Lord. Strengthen up your tottering knees. No, don't don't keep giving in to fear. Don't be fearful. Because there's a there's a one particular issue that I've been kind of struggling with the fear against. Like, oh gosh, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if this is possible. I don't know. I don't know. It's, oh, it's been a bit of distress for me. Mm -hmm. And the Lord's like, don't be stressed out. Don't, don't entertain this. Don't, you know, we've all been in this test. Our whole family, yeah. honestly, has been going through a testing of, of, of things. And it's like, it's like the Lord's answer is like, don't be weak, be strong. You know, and it goes on to say that. It says, say to those who are of a fearful and hasty heart, be strong, fear not. Why? Behold, see, your God will come with vengeance, a great rain, a great vindication of your faith. With the recompense of God, he will come and save you. That's basically the reward of the Lord will come. Isaiah 62, 11 says mm -hmm. that as well. He will come with a reward and recompense. It says, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. See, they're going to see. Even the blind are going to see the glory of the Lord. <laughs> then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a heart, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. I remember back in, what was it? It was 2018, we were staying at a hotel. Felt like the Lord gave me a word. He said, the breaking forth of a breaking forth. I was like, do you want to give me more than that? Because <laughs> I have no idea what that means. And But I just felt like the Lord said that. He's like, when the birth happens, there's going to be a breaking forth of a breaking forth. It was like, there's going to be a breaking forth of something. And then from that, there's going to be a breaking forth of something. And I'm mm. like, wow. So that's one on top of another. Mm. That's a double breaking forth. And I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, that's amazing. Um, it says, and the burning sand and the mirage shall become a pool. So that means what was once just in a vision and a promise and a prophetic thing. And you keep, oh, maybe this is the moment. Maybe this is the moment that God's doing it. Oh, and you get close to it and you're like, that's not the moment. Dang. And you keep having a lot of those in the wilderness. 
The wilderness is full of mirages. And you think, yeah. oh, it's the water. It's the promised water. There it is. Look at how great. Oh, that's big. Let's go. Let's go get to it. Man, we should have been to it by now. We're running about 100 yards. Man, why are we not getting to it? It should be right here. Oh, man, that was a mirage. It's what we thought the Lord was saying. It's what we thought was going to happen. Oh. And the Lord's like saying, when he shows up, there's not going to be no thinking about it. There's not going to be no wondering about it. You're not mm -hmm. going to be saying, is this the Lord? Oh, no, you're going to know. <laughs> you're going to know. You know, so stand firm in the midst of your testing because just know that God is going to come. And the burning sand and the mirage shall become a pool. Like the dry, barren thing will become saturated with water. And the thirsty ground springs of water. And the haunt of jackals where they lay resting shall be grass with reeds and rushes. Um... And a, and a highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for the redeemed. That's one time. The wayfaring man, yes, the simple ones and fools, shall not err in it and lose their way. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there. But the redeemed, that's two times, shall walk on it. And the ransomed, now another word to say ransomed is redeemed, because in order to redeem something, you have to buy it back. In order to ransom, you have to pay to get something that you want, to get something back. Same thing. So he's talking about redemption three times there. And we just came out of a week where God was like, expect redemption. And now here he is saying, hey, look, this is what's going to happen when the redemption comes. And the ransom of the Lord shall return, there's that returning again, mm -hmm. and come to Zion with singing. And everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Now, see, that's really important because when you're going through a test, even Jesus, when he was going through his 40 days, there might have been some sorrow and sighing going on. Mm -hmm. When you're going through a test, it's, there's sorrow and sighing. When Jesus died, that was really a test for them because he already said, I'm going to die, but then I'm going to come back. You know, mm -hmm. they were like, we, that, our brains don't compute that. All they knew was Jesus died. Yeah. And so that was a test for them. A lot of, so a lot of times when you're going through a test, there can be a lot of sorrow and sighing. There can be just a lot of distress. stuff. Distress. Distress during the distress test. Distress during the <laughs> test. You take the stress test. That's another test you get when you're pregnant, right? A stress yeah. test. Yeah. And so, so all we want you to know, no, I'm just kidding, <laughs> is that when you um, find yourself in a test, the keys to the test you know, we've talked about a lot of them on this video is, but ultimately it's just to return your gaze to the Lord. Because if you're suffering or struggling or sorrow and sighing, it's probably because, not necessarily, but probably the intensity and the, the venom of the sorrow and sighing is probably because you're turned away from the Lord and you're mm -hmm. looking at something else. You've got to turn to the Lord, look to him and and you will be saved, like the snakes that were biting all the Israelites in the wilderness, you know? The venom was coursing through their veins, and he, you know, Moses said, here, look at the snake on the pole, you'll be fine. So it's like, turn your gaze to the Lord. The Lord was like, just like the serpent that was lifted up in the wilderness, when I'm lifted up, I will draw all men to me, and they will find rest. They will find satisfaction. They will find salvation and deliverance, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. You know, that doesn't mean you're not going to have a day of trouble and you're not going to go through a test. There won't be trials and tribulations and distress. But God's like, look to me, John 16, 33, and overcome this stuff and take courage because I've overcome it already. And if you're in me, you are also an overcomer and this stuff doesn't have to overcome you because if you look to me, you will see my promises. You will see my heart. You will see my word. You will see my heart for you and you can't deny it. It's undeniable. And that God's plan for you is unbreakable you yeah. know yeah, so, and you can have the victory in that moment in the moment even if you don't have if you have the title to a house in england and you're here in the united states that house is yours mm -hmm. whatever money you need to get together or whatever however you're going to need to get there it might take god again to get you there but the title is yours that is yours you have rightful ownership you have rightful ownership to every word God has spoken over your life. He actually has rightful ownership to it as well. But you, by faith, you can grab a hold of it, and it's yours. 
those that those prophetic words, those songs sung, sung over you, his heart toward you, that belongs to you. Mm-hmm. You know, and nothing can change that but you. You can turn away from it. You can let go of it, but don't do that. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, hold fast to what you have. Yep, hold Which fast. Is a revelation. 311. <laughs> <laughs> well, so before we go, I just wanted to pray because yeah. um, I just feel like that's what the word wants so um well father we just come to you and i just we just come and say lord we have hope in you and i thank you that you are coming lord and i just pray that you would just burst forth upon our lives lord that you would come in and you would do only what you can do i pray Mm -hmm. lord that you would breathe your breath upon the life of your people upon the life of the body of christ um and all of those dead bones all those all of the places where our hope has been lost, yeah. Lord, you would just restore hope, that you would just bring us back to life, Lord, that we could go forward and we would see that you not only speak your word, but you perform it. And so, Father, we just yes. pray that, um, I just pray that right now, that you would just release upon the body of Christ the truth of your word, and that we would stand up with great hope and um, be victorious as you have called us. Lord, we are victorious in you. And Lord, just let us know that in our hearts. Let let that be deeply seated in us, Lord. And, um, and I just pray, Lord, that your word and your promises would just come forth upon the earth, Lord. That we would see your glory. Let your glory fall. And um, that there would just be... Um, just a, your lavish love would just come upon us and strengthen the body of Christ right now, Lord. Mm-hmm. That in this time of darkness, we would see your great light. And yes. that there would just be a change and a revolution and a breaking off of our hearts, Lord. Let, let our hearts be released to run free in you and to just um, be completely that there are there's no doubt in in our mind or our hearts um to and that we would just run after you with just such a great tenacity to know you and um just just let our love be restored father let let that um vibrancy of love and the um the simplicity of love in you be restored and the great joy and um just, you know, like like a wedding day, you know, when someone gets married, you know, mm-hmm. it's like there's just this great joy and just this, I don't know, there's, I feel like there's just such a simplicity and just, it's just free and, and all of that. And so, Father, I just pray it's that... Like you, Jeremiah 33, 11. Yeah, you would just um, place that upon your people and that, that the weak knees would become strong, that, that there would just be, um, that the dumb would speak, that... Um, eyes would see and ears would be open, Father, and just in in the body of Christ, yeah. Lord, um, and that you would make your bride just um, beautiful before you. Yeah. And I just pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's awesome. So. That's awesome. Yay. Alrighty, guys. <laughs> so um, until next time, we will see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>